my name is Tracy Burton and I am the Program Manager for the Disability Health and Wellness Initiative within the Division of Disability Services. Today we're going to be cooking a recipe from our Eat Well, Live Well, Be Well, a guide to healthy living for people with disabilities. Hi, I'm Jen Shore and I have been working on the Eat Well, Live Well, Be Well Guide to Healthy Living for People with Disabilities with the New Jersey Division of Disability Services. We're at Community House today and we are going to prepare the one pan roasted chicken breast with potato recipe from the manual. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start by washing the potatoes and Christina is going to take over on that. So what we did with this recipe is we mixed the Yukon Gold and the red potatoes just because it makes it look pretty in the dish. All of the different potatoes have um, the same kind of nutrients but it really is a more visually appealing to have the various colors. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut these up and we're going to put them in the bottom of a roasting pan. Any kind of pan can be used. It could be an aluminum foil or a glass pan. The point is you want to put them at the bottom because we're going to put chicken on top of it and that way the drippings from the chicken will flavor the potato. That sounds really good. So that sounds really good. Any size you cook them really doesn't matter. What you want to try to do is keep the sizes somewhat uniform. The reason for that is they cook at an even temperature. If you have some really big pieces and small ones, your small ones will get mushy and your big ones won't cook Still all the way through. Yeah. So, so right size and about the same size. Absolutely. So if you want to just throw those in there so we can make some more space to throw some more on. Oh, see that's much smarter. <laughs> Unless I make a mess. Not at all. I didn't do. No, perfect. Because this is a healthy living manual, we didn't add butter to the potatoes. The only um, oil that we're adding is a little bit of olive oil and then the fat that comes off the chicken breast, which is really minimal because we're only using the white meat. So this is a very healthy recipe and most of the flavors are just going to be from the salt and the pepper and the lemon in the chicken. All right, so we'll put those in there. And some of the sink. That's okay. We didn't need that one. No. All right, so what we'll do is we'll just kind of lay them out and make a bed for the chicken on it. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil on them. And the reason I do that is just to give it a little flavor, but also because it keeps them from getting all sticky and clumpy because the potatoes are starchy. Um, I don't know if this is true or not, but I like to salt and pepper each kind of ingredient as opposed to doing it all at once. It's supposed to add more flavor. I don't know if there's any truth to that, but it's just fun to do. So, it is fun. Um, do you want to get the chicken? Sure. So we have the, the potatoes. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lemon on them. Gives a little extra flavor. One of the things that I also like to do when I'm cooking is put the zest of the lemon. Just use it, any kind of cheese grater at the most um, small setting and just kind of zest a little of the skin in it. It gives it a more lemony flavor than just the juice does. So it just adds a little bit of extra flavor. And once again, that minimizes the amount of salt or different things you're using so it makes it healthier. Um, so we're gonna put the chicken in. Obviously, when you're dealing with raw chicken, you wanna make sure that your surface area is separated from everything else and you wash your hands afterwards. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our chicken breasts, kinda open it up a little bit and lay it on top of the potatoes. It smells good. It smells all like lemon. It's, the lemon is really, really strong. Mm -hmm. So I'll put those here. We'll throw this out. And excuse me, I'll just wash mm -hmm. my hands real quick. And then I'm going to do the same thing that we did before to the potatoes. I'll take a little bit of olive oil, put it on top of the chicken breast, a little bit of the lemon. and then the salt and pepper. Um, because the potatoes are raw, what we'll do is we'll cover this with aluminum foil so the juice will kind of go off the chicken and it will um, cook the potatoes so they'll be thoroughly cooked through. So let me grab the aluminum foil. Do you have? Yep, we have some more. Awesome. 
So we'll preheat the oven while we're finishing up. Am I doing this right? Yeah. Please. Perfect. All right, so let's, this should be about two of them. Ah, it's getting away from me. I was just funny or something happened. So, <laughs> Yeah, we just want to have it all the way covered so the steam will stay in there and we'll cook all the way. So what we'll do is we'll put this in the oven and then we can prep the salad while we wait. Okay. The only thing we need to wash is the cucumber. You want to just wash that off real quick and then we'll get rid of it? Awesome. Okay, so we kind of cheated a little bit. We got the uh, pre-washed baby lettuce and kale, which is just an easier way to deal with making a salad. So I usually go through a few of these a week. I just keep it in the fridge so it's available when I need it. So, just throw some in there. And then do you want to cut up the cucumber? Sure, I just slice it. Yeah, I'll get one starter for you. Okay. Here, I'll put it over here for you. Just want to slice it into, I'll cut it in half so it'll lay flat. One of the things that can be hard sometimes about cutting vegetables is they're round on the side. So if you cut it in half, it'll lay flat. It makes the surface area easier for you to cut without it turning. Bite-sized pieces? Perfect. Just enough so it'll fit on a fork. Awesome. Now one of the okay. things we always do is we put our fingers in for the last chop so no fingers get in the food. So then you can just throw those right in. Even the ends? Absolutely. Okay. The skin has different vitamins and nutrients that the inside does, so I definitely like the skin on everything. I know you'll even notice when we did the potatoes, we didn't take the skin yeah, off of it. it. So then we'll just throw some carrots on there, and looks beautiful. And then the same thing, you can do like what we did before with the potatoes. You could just kind of zest a little lemon in to give it a little bit of extra flavor. That way you don't use as much dressing on it. So when you serve it for dinner tonight, just make sure you use a, a low fat dressing and usually those are like a vinaigrette. They don't have like the cream or the fat and then you have a really healthy, healthy salad. And we forgot the tomatoes. <laughs> so we'll put some of those in. And the other thing you want to try to do is as many colors as you can eat in a day. They try to eat the whole rainbow in terms of fruits and vegetables. So we have the orange, the red, the green. So it's perfect salad. If you had any purple cabbage, you could throw it in there. And just anything you have, you just put it in. So, so what we have here, I made these ahead of time. They're called monkey sticks. And what I do is I take a banana and we put a popsicle stick in it. And with a knife, a butter knife, we put um, either peanut butter or almond butter, any kind of honey, any kind of sticky substance that would allow other things to go towards it. And then I just put, um, I put an organic granola on it with chocolate, chocolate granola and chocolate, chocolate chips. I thought I saw chocolate. So, that was the first thing when I opened the bag. I was like, there's chocolate. They're chocolate. such a good dessert. <laughs> and then I freeze them. And then it gives more of a popsicle feel to it. It's a good protein source with the peanuts or the almond butter. And and then um, the nuts are also good, really good for you. So a healthy dessert alternative. And you have another set in the freezer as oh well. So absolutely. And that's just that a dried funny. coconut. There's no sugar oh, on it. There's no oil. It's just regular shredded coconut. So you have a healthy dessert, which is one of the hardest things. So you can actually find the recipe for them right on page 37. And it just really talks about how to do them and all the different things you can kind of roll on them. And any kind of cereal you like. I mean, as I said, I've made them for breakfast as well. They don't have to be frozen. You could just have the banana for breakfast with um, cereal on it or granola. So you're all set. So Christina, I'll leave this with you so you can make some of the other recipes, give it a try. And um, I wanted to thank you for having us today at Community House. You have a wonderful kitchen. It was really great thank for you. cooking. It was fun. Thanks for having yeah. us. And um, 
We did our, I don't know if you came to the Abilities Expo where we actually um, did a kind of our kickoff of the manual, but coming in April, in April, we're gonna have our next one, our part two. Our fitness guide. So after we consume all these lovely, healthy, <laughs> nutritional dishes, we will exercise and keep fit physically as well. So thank you so much for having us come today and I look forward to seeing you in a year in your, your aerobics outfit. We'll do that one next, okay? <laughs> and I want to thank the both of you and a big thank you to Community House. Thank you.